Hey, today I'll be talking about the final episode of Legend of Jun Huan. Jun Huan is alone with the Emperor. Weak and dying, the Emperor calls for his spy guy, wanting to know before he dies if Six Prince is really his son. Seeing that he won't be getting the truth, the Emperor still makes a last ditch effort and just asks Jun Huan. Damn, ice cold. With that, there's really nothing else to say. Jin Huan's demeanor makes it clear that she feels nothing for him but anticipation for his death. The Emperor tries to get her to call him by his nickname one last time, clearly trying to hold on to one last memory of his dead wife, but Jin Huan doesn't even grant him that. Instead, she drops another bombshell on him. The Emperor doesn't even have the strength to sit up. He tries to call for his servants, but Jun Huan has sent everyone away. Lan Yu's poison has taken effect and, completely helpless, the Emperor can't even say a final word before he dies. This is what all the scheming has been leading up to, and I am so proud of Jun Huan for making it to the end, but wow, what a way to go out. I kind of feel sorry for the old man. As he's getting weaker, he remembers catching his mother having an affair with Long Ke Duo, and in the end, he finds out that he was just as blind to his consort's affairs as his father was. No one really cared about him, and he dies alone knowing that his successor won't even be his son. Well, at least he can finally be with his beloved Chun Yuan. Jun Huan exits his room and gives her iconic line. And just like that, the end of a reign. A short while later, the Emperor's funeral is underway and no one is wasting any time. It's time to decide who will be the next on the throne. Through her tears, Jun Huan says the Emperor always said he wanted Fourth Prince to take the throne after he died. Some don't want to take her word for it, but she says the Emperor, wanting to make sure there would be no fighting after his death, left the letter and arranged to have it guarded far from her reach, so they're free to inspect it all they want. Su Shan doesn't say anything, but man, what an interesting character he is. He probably knows more than anyone else, and I guess he's backing Jun Huan's play here because, I mean, the Emperor is already dead. This way, he at least gets to live out his life with Jing Xi. <laughs> and so, the fourth prince takes the throne. It's so cool because this was the first scene in the first episode as well, now with the fourth prince instead of his father. Although, I mean, they were kind of lazy with some of these scenes because they're literally just the same scenes. <laughs> the new emperor starts by making his mother, Jun Huan, the empress dowager. He also selects his own empress and his first consort. Now that Lan Yi has accomplished what she wanted and got her revenge for the man she loved, she decides there's nothing else to live for and cuts her wrist, bleeding out with a smile on her face. It's such a shame though, because with the Emperor dead, you'd think she'd have more freedom now, maybe she could go back to riding horses. I mean, Jin Huan owes her a huge favor, surely she'd let her do what she wanted. Anyway, with that, we have one last loose end to tie up. Now that there is a new Emperor, the previous Emperor should become Mu Ho, Empress Dowager, while Jin Huan should be Sheng Mu, Empress Dowager. Because the Empress was the previous Emperor's official wife, her position should be higher than Jin Huan's. So really, the Empress could have just lived a peaceful life, minding her own business, and eventually, she would have still ended up on top. But no, she got herself into all this trouble because she wanted to be the only Empress Dowager. <laughs> Jin Huan goes to visit her and the Empress is gloating, thinking she's won. But Jun Huan's got a surprise for her. Before the previous emperor died, forced by his mother's last will, he promised in writing that he would never take away the empress's title. And so they need to follow the emperor's words. In other words, she will never see herself become the empress dowager. To add insult to injury, the Emperor will be buried with his first love, the Empress's sister, while she will be buried alone when she dies. And so, the title she fought so hard to keep will now be all she has. <laughs> Finally, Jun Huan is introduced to her son's two wives, and the cycle starts all over again. Woohoo! I can't believe I made it to the end. This was so much work, but I'm glad I did it. You guys have made this rewatch so much fun. Every time I thought I had the story down, someone would bring up something I got wrong or a tinfoil hat conspiracy theory that could change everything. I have really enjoyed this. Before I go, I'd like to give out some very important awards. 
The Dum Dum Award, which I thought for sure would be going to Chife, in the end goes to her son, Third Prince. He really took it to the next level. Congratulations. <laughs> My favorite character award goes to this guy. What is he doing? No idea, but I love it. Speaking of jobs, the coveted hardest worker award to Huafei's maid, because there is no way she was getting paid enough to deal with her. Seriously, though, this has got to be the most stressful job in the palace. Huafei was insane. The Amazon award for the thing I most want to buy? These nail guards. My nails aren't even long. I just want to menacingly stroke them across someone's face as I tell them they're finished or slowly take them off as I contemplate my next move at work. Best Actress Award goes to The Empress. No, not Ada Choi. The Empress for acting like she gave a damn about any of these women for years. Highest Body Count Award for the most murderous character? The Incense. The Incense had no lines and yet said so much. My mom's favorite character award goes to Jingxi because, and I quote, she has kind eyes and her hands look strong. Thanks, mom. Lastly, my favorite award, the Audacity Award, for someone who just did not know their place. Someone who made you say, who do you think you are? So many strong contenders, but in the end, it goes to you, because who even was she? The Audacity. All right, y'all, till next time, thanks for watching.